As I always say, I care about books. And because I care about books, I care a lot about writing. And since I care about writing and books, I really care about ideas, since everything is an idea before it's anything else. The truth is that talent is not enough for you to be a successful writer, but it does help. And even if you're a technically talented writer, success demands even more. It demands great ideas. The reality is you may not be as creative as you think you are. Our ideas and what we want to say are shaped by many things, including our experiences, our families and the people we meet throughout our lives, who we listen to, and the books we read. And if you're really a writer, I know you do read. You do read, don't you? But if you think that the purpose of reading is to pick up other writers' ideas, you're actually missing the point entirely. Reading is important because it expands your mind. It entertains, provokes, informs, persuades. As a writer, you should know all these things. But you may not have thought about this. What writing contributes most to a writer is that it exercises and expands your mind. Once your mind is expanded, it actually has room for all kinds of creative ideas. Ideas that are either new ones or old ideas framed in new and fresh ways. Ideas that are nurtured and enlarged by your experiences and observations. This is how you begin to garner great ideas for your writing. Most online sources will tell you the elements of a so-called good book, great openings, strong characters, authentic dialogue, blah, blah, blah. But what they never tell you is that your basic idea either works or it doesn't. But how do you know if your ideas are good ones or bad ones? That's difficult and you know this. You've probably already had the experience of telling someone about your idea. We all do this. You may have told a friend, a colleague, a relative. And you'll note that they usually say something like, that's a great idea. Well, it might be a great idea, but it might not be a great idea at all. So are there any clues that your idea is bad? Well, here's my list of the elements of a bad idea for a book. Too much personal angst. Someone told you to write a book about it. You used a writing prompt about something you're not really interested in. The story doesn't resonate with anyone else but you. It's been done to death in one way or another. You had to look for an idea on a list of book ideas online. It doesn't tell people anything they don't already know. The idea is fundamentally defensive. Or finally, you fail to shape the raw idea. Raw ideas are like first drafts. They need nurturing and editing. Of course, that's just my view based on 30 years of writing and publishing. Feel free to write about any of these. Just be prepared for publishers to pass on them. And please just keep it to yourself. There are already millions of self-published books based on these bad ideas. We don't need another one. So how then do you find good ideas? Well, let's be begin by discussing that ubiquitous writing prompt. You know what I'm talking about if you're a writer. There, there are books full of writing prompts. There are online lists of writing prompts. You can subscribe to online sources that will send you a prompt a week. They're usually a line or two of text, the beginning of a story that you, the writer, can then use to create your own story. And that can move in any direction your imagination takes you. And if you subscribe to Moonlight Press on YouTube, you'll eventually begin to receive notices of inspiration snips. This is a series of video writing prompts. So do writing prompts make for great book ideas? Not on their own, they don't. On their own, they are terrific ways to stimulate your imagination and to practice your writing, which you need to do. We've talked about this before. But you need to be passionate about your idea. If an idea isn't exciting, you shouldn't do it. At least that's according to Ray Bradbury. And he has had a lot of exciting ideas, in my view. So where will you find those exciting ideas? I think you'll probably find it, the idea that you're looking for, where you least expect it and when you least expect it. But you have to be open to the ideas all around you. You might find it in a conversation you overhear at a restaurant or on a bus. 
or something you hear or see while you're waiting for your doctor's appointment. Or it might come to you in the shower. Or you might see it in a news article or in a tweet you read online. You might even have a dream where there's a good idea. But you'll never catch these ideas if you're not paying attention to the present moment as much as you possibly can. Some writers learn meditation techniques so that they can learn to stay in the moment, and I highly recommend this. And try to stop burying your face in your phone when you're outside. Look around, listen to conversations, feel the breeze on your face, smell the aromas wafting from the restaurants you walk by or even from the sewer. Pay attention and keep a notebook handy. Lots of people have said that the best way to have a good idea is to have lots of ideas. People like Thomas Edison, Linus Pauling, Pablo Picasso, they've all said this and they've all had lots of good ideas. Ideas are like rabbits. You get a couple, learn how to handle them, and pretty soon you have a dozen. Or so said John Steinbeck. Start with one terrific idea and watch it multiply. Steinbeck knew what he was talking about. No one has a magic bullet for knowing which ideas are good ones and which ideas are bad ones. Great writing, though, does come from great ideas.